Hello and welcome to MBS Nations interview series to help you answer the toughest interview questions. Today we are going to cover tell me about yourself. Now tell me about yourself seems like a simple question even innocuous but in just a few slides we are going to see it's anything but that. So why is this question important? There are two reasons. More than 99% interviews start with this question. And the second reason is most interviews take just three minutes, just the first three minutes to form an impression about you. Recap, most interviews start with this question. And secondly, you just have three minutes, just three minutes to help your interviewers form a favorable impression about you. Why do interviewers like to start with this question? Again, there are two reasons. One, they want to understand how meaningful have your experiences been, academic and professional. And the second reason is they want to assess your communication skills. How strong are your communication skills? Let's delve deeper into each of these points. Now, how meaningful are your experiences? Why do interviews really want to know this? Again, for two reasons. The first reason is they want to know, will you add value to the business school? Now, most business school programs are highly rigorous programs. Will you be able to keep pace with the rigor of the program? And secondly, do you have the right industry experience, the right academic bent of mind to be able to contribute to activities such as case study discussions or competitions or uh, assignments and so on and so forth? The second reason that they want to understand about your experiences is, and this is a very important part, they really want to understand what differentiates you. So put yourself in your interviewer's shoes. Right? The job is, it's, it's a tall order for them. From several thousands of applications, they have to whittle it down to few hundreds. Essentially, they have to sift and identify and separate the right applicants from a large applicant pool. And how do they do so? They do so by identifying or by understanding what attributes, experience, attitude and aspirations differentiates you from the rest of the applicant pool. Now the second reason that we that interviewers like to start with this question is to assess whether you are able to communicate with clarity and succinctly. Now why is it important again? Because they want to see how well do you interact with others beyond the interview once you are in a B-School environment, will you be able to communicate with other high potential individuals? The second reason they want to assess is, how well do you respond under pressure? Can you think on your feet? The third, and this is a very important point, do you have the gravitas to succeed? Now, what do we mean by gravitas? Gravitas means presence, executive presence. And why do interviews really care about whether you have gravitas? is because they want to see that not only will you be able to succeed in a B-School environment, but will you be hireable in a management or leadership role post your MBA? So they really want to assess your hireability potential post your MBA. Now, so far what we've covered about, you know, why this question is important is from an interviewer's perspective or from a B-School perspective. But if you were to ask this, what's in it for you? This question gives you the power to make a good first impression, which basically means it helps you differentiate yourself. It allows you to become memorable. It allows you to make sure that your interviewers remember you from a stack of other applications. And the second reason is, and this is critical, it allows you to direct the rest of the interview in a direction that you want it to go, right? By choosing or rather by zooming in on the most important aspects of your profile that will help the interview be guided in a direction that you would want it to be. Now, this question is, why does it even rank among the toughest interview questions? What makes this question so difficult? 
is the simple open-ended nature of this question. So it's very, again, as I mentioned, the seemingly simple nature of this question itself is the reason why it's so difficult because most applicants, you know, they are smart individuals, they're highly capable individuals, and yet they end up being unsure how to respond. And they end up making these three common mistakes. The first mistake that they do is they tend to ramble. They go on and on and on forever, so much so that applicant, the, the interviewers are put to sleep. The other end of the spectrum is that they provide super cryptic responses, to the point responses, so much so to the point that the interviewers have no real takeaways from the response. And the third is they share inane information. This is super important again because this is again it ties to the, the point that we discussed in the previous slide. If you are not going to be selective about the information that you choose to share with your interview panel, it's essentially a missed opportunity. Missed opportunity for you to be memorable and be to direct the conversation to your benefit. And that's all we have in this module. I'll see you in the next module. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the second lesson of this module. We are going to look at the most common mistake made by applicants when responding to tell me about yourself. And the most common mistake that most candidates do is simply verbalizing their resume, literally word for word. We'll take a quick look at an example or two to understand what we mean by this mistake and how candidates end up making this mistake. What I would suggest is you pause this video for couple of minutes take a look at this example and once you're done come back all right i'm hoping that you have gone through the example and let's take a look at this response uh, this is an example of uh, the, the first draft of a response that one of the clients of mbs edition had prepared for his interview with one of the leading business schools what we we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the structure of this response and see why it doesn't really cut the ice Okay, so I've done BTEC in Mechanical Engineering from NIT Trichy, talks about his academic degree and the institute has done his undergraduation from, okay. Next, he goes on to talk about a month and a year where he started working for a certain company and the role that he was in, okay. The next sentence is, again, it follows a similar structure. He talks about a month and a date and a year where he moved to another function of a different company. Okay, the third sentence is also similar in structure. It's almost like, you know, one can predict what he's going to say, you know, maybe with some differences in maybe the company name or the function or the role that is played. The problem with this response is, it's literally a chronological rehash of the person's resume. There's nothing that stands out. Now imagine, again, if I were an, imagine if you were an interviewer or you had to, and you had to interview 10 applicants in a single day, and every single one of them came to you with this kind of a response where they literally spoke about the chronological order of the career decisions they have uh, made. Again, just giving you, okay, you know what, in so-and-so year and month, I moved to a company, and the next so-and-so year and month, I moved to another company or this function, things like that. What really stands out for you? Nothing really, nothing is memorable. The thing that really strikes me, if I were to look at this response, and when I get this kind of responses, personality not included. There's nothing that speaks to me about the personality of the individual who's giving this response. It's just their resume. I might as well not have this person in front of me. I might as well just go through the resume. I mean, we don't even need uh, an interview to, to happen here. Because an interview, remember, is an opportunity to have a conversation. And when you respond to this question in a super mechanical manner, this seems like a rather mechanical way of talking about yourself, of telling your, your life journey so far. It really doesn't do much for the interviewers. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Again, you can pause it, take a look at it, and come back. All right, similar thing. The person talks about uh, the, the city that he was born and where he grew up, okay? Then he talks about his uh, the college that he's done as engineering from, which is a good college. He talks about his specialization, which is good. He talks about the fact that he passed with distinction, all right? He talks about the company that he 
that he started working with and he, where he worked on something called TI Interactive. Now, this is vague. I had no idea what TI Interactive means. And this is a bit of a lack of, in some sense, empathy. Because you are somewhere making an assumption that just because you have worked on an application or a software, everyone else knows about it. Right? Then he goes on to talk about the fact that he joined his next company, which is a startup. And the last sentence is all about his various hobbies or personal interests. Now, the reason this, this response is, again, simply you know, walking someone through their resume, again, in a, in a most ineffective and bland way is because a person has not, similar to the previous example that we saw, is at no point trying to tell us why did they change companies. For me, I'd be very curious. I mean, this is a, this is the thing that I should ideally, you know, get as part of this response. So if this person joined Texas Instruments, why did he join Texas Instruments? Okay, so maybe because he did instrumentation engineering and you know, Texas Instruments is what plays, you know, what, what hired him and things. Okay, but there could be still something, some element that he could talk about, uh, you know, due, uh, about his stint at Texas Instruments. Maybe there was something that he really liked doing. There is nothing that stands out about his stint at Texas Instruments. Then he talks about the fact that he went on to work with another startup. Again, what did he exactly do there? What was the reason for joining the startup to begin with? None of those information, none of those really important standout details are included in his response. And the last sentence is all about, again, just a simple linear list of stuff that he does in his spare time. This is just planned. Nothing stands out for me. And again, going back to the first lesson of this module, we spoke about, now if you were to really get it right, you can be memorable. You can make sure that you differentiate yourself by, by showing that you are consciously thinking about the decisions that you have made. So if you changed a company, why did you move from your first company to your second company? There, there must be a reason. You have to bring that up. What are your accomplishments at work? If you're not going to highlight, if you're just going to say, oh, you know what, I worked here, everyone works. Everyone works at some company or the other. And that's a bare minimum qualification that you know, most B-schools have, which is that you should be, you should have some professional experience. But if you're not going to take the opportunity to really explain the reason uh, for why, for the transitions, job transitions, the role transitions that you had, or the reason for joining a company, or the fact that you accomplished something which is significant of significance uh, at those companies, again, it's a missed opportunity. A missed opportunity to differentiate yourself, to make yourself memorable, and more importantly, to direct the conversation in a direction that you would like it to be. To conclude, what you really need to know is what's going to get the interviewer's attention, which is very important. If you want to screen tons of applicants in a day, you really need to know how can I make sure that I am memorable from the word go. And secondly, it's not just enough to get their attention. You also need to know what is it that the interviewer is going to be most impressed by, which is basically clarity of thinking. Right? If you have transitioned from, as I said again, one company or one role to another, why did you do so? When you were in a certain company or in a certain role, what did you accomplish in that role or at that company? If you have some personal interest, did you do something really interesting with your personal interest? Are your personal interests informing how you are evolving as a person? These are some of the questions that ideally should also be answered in your response. Yeah, That's all we have for this lesson. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to lesson three of this module. Now in this module, in this lesson, what we're going to see is a framework, a simple framework with three steps to help you, first of all, think about your response. How do you would, how would you like to structure your response? And secondly, build your response. All right, so this is called the three P's framework. The first P is Plan your response. And how do you plan your response? You plan your response with a six element structure that we will see in the next few slides to build an impactful response. The second P is prepare. Bulleted versus scripted. There are two approaches that you have to prepare for your to prepare your response. Bulleted means identifying the main points and keeping them handy so that you don't you don't really memorize your response now in case you forget. The, the response, the structure of it, at least you'll remember which are the most important elements that are part of your response. 
what is scripted as opposed to the bulleted approach is where you actually literally write down your response word by word and for some clients we have seen it really works very well they're more comfortable writing down their responses and memorizing their responses but what we've also seen is this has a risk to it which is that not all of us are blessed with photogenic memory and sometimes if we rely a lot on our memory to remember a response we may forget our response uh, when we are in an interview in a high stress environment like an interview so bulleted approach that way works it works really well if you remember as we said the main the most important points of your response you keep them handy that should be good the third p is practice this is super important make sure that your response is no longer than 3 minutes it should not be more than 3 minutes it should be under 3 minutes we'll take a look at the first p we're going to delve deeper into each of these three steps so the first p is plan and this is where we're going to unveil the six element structure that you can use to build your response so the first element of this six element structure is providing a high level overview of your academic and professional journey highlighting why you are passionate about work and i think this is what was definitely missing in the uh, the examples that we saw in the previous lesson where the candidates really did talk about why they they love what they did at work right and that's very important again when you demonstrate passion for your work you have a chance to differentiate yourself the third is emphasizing on key professional experiences limit them to one or two most important most relevant experiences at work and what did you accomplish with with those experiences for instance let's say you were managing a project or you were part of a, a major project that's a great experience to have but don't just stop at saying that oh, i was part of this major project but also outline or also emphasize the accomplishments so maybe you achieved some cost savings or some efficiency or some you know you you were part of some good strong hiring and things like that so talk about your successes your what you accomplished during those experiences as well the fourth is highlighting promotions awards and recognitions that you might have received or won it helps add lend more credibility to your profile if you have transitioned from one job to another you changed jobs you changed uh, roles do talk about the reason very briefly do talk about the reason for transitioning from one job to another or one role to another and finally do cite your personal interest but don't just stop at say these are my personal interests for instance i like to read i like to watch movies don't just stop there also talk about why they are important and if you have some great successes even as part of your personal interests talk about those so that's the six element structure Now the obvious question that the that might occur to to you would be do i absolutely have to have all these six elements as part of my response are all these six elements equally important what i suggest is the more work experience you have the more important it becomes to talk about what you have accomplished at work it's very important and this is a great place for you to talk about for you to direct the attention of your interviewers to some of the successes that you have had at work but for recent graduates for instance let's say you're someone with 0 to 2 years of experience or let's say you are applying to for instance uh, the the, uh, the the program that isb has for fresh graduates you, know? uh, you can definitely or even sp gen and other schools you can definitely talk about your academic journey that should form an important part of your narrative and how would you make it an important part of your narrative for instance you have uh, you know you can talk about your summer projects you can talk about some of the internships you've done or you can talk about the specializations why did you choose a certain specialization and things like that area of specialization and things like that what i'd suggest is this is a place where you need to use your judgment because you are the best judge of what is important about your profile so pick the must have elements for your answer by using your judgment maybe there are some aspects maybe you don't have very strong personal interests maybe those interests are not they are very vague and maybe you really have very very interesting 
experiences at you know at work that that you really like to talk about so remember because the time is limited for this response you just have 3 minutes or less to talk about yourself there is an important need for you to sift again what we discussed in the the first more, uh, the, the first lesson is remember that be selective about the information you're going to present to your ad com and this is where it's it's going to be a judgment call and if you are confused again talk to someone who can help you understand what is striking what is impressive and what is it and you can actually leave the non impressive part out of your response identifying at the most two most impactful experiences and achievements just reiterating this you don't have to list out everything again use your judgment to choose the most impressive accomplishments the most impressive experiences that will again help you direct the rest of your conversation that should be the ultimate aim how do you direct the rest of the conversation how do you get the right attention of your interviewers and how do you sustain that attention very important and finally use your personal interest to show that you are not just someone who goes to work does stuff but that you have a multi dimensional personality there's so much more to you than just being a professional or just being a student the second p is prepare we already discussed this you have two approaches that you can use either a bullet point approach or a scripted approach but whatever be the case we we highly 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 recommend keeping the main points handy scripted approach is not without its risk not all of us are blessed with photogenic memory what if you forget your the response that you might have memorized so it's all the more important to keep your main points handy and yes again take a bullet point approach it will it will it will not fail you if you do it right rather than a scripted approach and if you're very comfortable by all means keep the scripted approach but keep the main points handy as well the third piece practice make sure that you practice and make sure you time yourself when you are practicing to ensure that your response stays under 3 minutes use pause strategically you don't have to just again remember the first lesson where we spoke about how people tend to ramble go on and on and on don't do that you can always insert a pause or two when you are transitioning from let's say let's say from your academic to your professional experience or maybe from one job or one role to another know when to use your pause strategically or you'll appear out of breath and it will seem like a monotonous uh, response the third is of course don't forget to breathe very important to breathe normally Hello and welcome back to lesson 3 of the first module. Now this module is super critical because this is where we are literally going to apply everything that we have seen so far. So this is the plan your response lesson. We have tons of examples that we'll be covering. So you will see a lot of samples of how people have responded in the past to the question tell me about yourself. Now to answer this question you remember that we've seen the six element structure in the previous lesson right so quick recap of course you have all of it the high level overview of your academic and professional journey highlighting why you're passionate about your work emphasizing key professional experiences limiting those to two and of course talking about the accomplishments outlining promotions awards and recognitions finally uh, elaborating on the reasons for transition if you had transition from a role to uh, another role or a job to another job do explain the reason for doing so and finally cite your personal interests all right so this is example 1 what i would suggest is that you pause the video go through the example and resume the video once you are done all right i i'm hoping that you've gone through the example so in the next few slides what we're going to do is we are going to look at the structure of the example map it to the six element structure see how it maps to the six element structure do a more detailed analysis and finally come up with an overall verdict of whether this is an example of a good response or an average response structure of this example we're just going to deconstruct line by line what this example looks like so if we were to see this example starts with the academic credentials of the individual which is where he talks about the fact that he's done his instrumentation engineering from 
कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग पुणे then he talks about a skill which in this case which is analytical skills and how he uses it to develop world class products in a certain domain the rest of his response is about his personal interests where he talks about two interests that he is passionate about one is reading about astrophysics because he is intrigued by a brilliant astrophysicist such as neil degrasse tyson and the second is is where he talks about how he volunteers with an ngo where he teaches underprivileged kids on weekends all right now let's take a look at the six element structure and which elements from the six element structure does he use in his response so the very first element is used where he does provide a high level overview of both his academic and professional journey so far the second point also gets included in bits he he touches upon it right he does talk about the fact that you know he likes to use his analytical skills and he likes to apply his analytical skills to work okay the third point doesn't exactly get mentioned anywhere he doesn't really talk about any key experiences so it's one thing to say i use it to develop world class products first of all world class products itself seems a little vague to me i mean why would you say something is world class products explain or substantiate it a bit more right and you develop i don't know what you develop there right likewise do you have any interesting examples to share where you can talk about you know what do you exactly mean by the fact that you develop world class products especially for someone who is from who is not exactly from the restaurant and food delivery domain this seems a little vague likewise he doesn't talk about any successes at work the fourth element he doesn't again mention anything about any promotions any awards any recognition so far likewise the fifth element now the fifth element we can always give him a benefit of doubt in case this is his very first job this is his very first role maybe he doesn't really have enough data on this front and that's okay to exclude and finally yes he does talk about his personal interests and why they are important but is it adequate i mean if we were to take a look at it we'll take a step back and say oh you know what three out of six elements have been included is it enough well, let's take a look and see what the what the really the, the response analysis says one is again the fact that he mentions uh using his analytical abilities to develop world class products which could mean anything it doesn't really give me an idea because remember you tell me about yourself is your elevator pitch yet at the same time it has to have enough details in it to intrigue me this is super vague secondly it doesn't mention any significant achievement at work which is very important especially when you are in a b school interview had this been part of a casual conversation probably this would have still done but not in a b school interview where you have to differentiate yourself as we said from a pile of applications from a pool of application not even a pile a pool of applications so there's not nothing really memorable about his experience the second thing is his personal interests they are good but he could have actually substantiated a bit more about some of the again achievements that he has managed to gain by pursuing his interests for instance talking about reading right he could always talk about the fact that reading makes him more open minded it actually sharpens his analytical skills that way he is linking it with a skill he's mentioned in his response the second thing is he talks about his work with the ngo again he could talk about some successes that he's had with his work at the ngo and finally this point is very important and this is a mistake that a lot of people do it i can't even go into how many people do it but this happens over and over again where people they they tend to repeat their name and typically this question is asked it's never the very first thing that 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 gets discussed you know you walk into a room or if you're having your video or virtual interview you typically have an initial round of introductions names are exchanged you also know the names of your interviewers so by which you that really stating your name again during the interview seems very forced very rehearsed and very scripted so avoid doing that you don't need to start again by talking about by by stating your name you can directly start with your academic and professional profile so what's the overall verdict you know given what we've discussed so far what do you now think of it and if you thought it's an average response it matches with what we have all right now let's move on to the next example so for example to again pause the video take a good look at the example
okay i hope you you've gone through the example in detail now let's look at the structure of this example so it starts with the person outlining his professional credentials he talks about the fact he is an it services professional working in one of the top it firms and then he goes on to talk about give a high level overview of his professional experience where he talks about the fact that he works with clients in certain geographies and helps them increase efficiencies in certain areas of their business okay the third point is where he mentions a specific experience that he was part of this major projects you know a, a big system like mortgage evaluation system and and then he talks about an interest area which is that his true interest lies is what he's discovered or is realized lies in the finance domain and finally he rounds off his entire response by listing out three personal interests now if we were to look at or rather map the structure of his response with the six element structure we'll see that the person does provide a high level overview of his professional journey in this case we can give a benefit of doubt maybe this is a highly experienced professional this is someone who's probably who probably has more than 5 or 7 years of experience and therefore the person doesn't really think his academic profile is as important as his prof professional profile which is fine right the second point is highlighting why he's passionate about his work he doesn't really talk about it. he does talk about what he does again at a very high level but he doesn't really talk about why he's passionate about his work the third point is something that he touches in 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 one part this part gets mentioned or highlighted where he talks about the fact that he was part of this major project and what the project has helped him uh, helped him understand but is does he talk about any proven successes now being part of a major project and being a crucial or critical element of of that project is a are two different scenarios right so he doesn't really talk about any proven successes there that maybe he led the project or the project was completed in a record amount of time or the fact that uh, you know generated lots of uh, revenue in terms of maybe getting new business and things like that so none of those things are mentioned here so it so so basically point 3 as i said only one part of point 3 gets included the second part which is a very important element doesn't get included nevertheless there is a tick there which is okay the fourth point of course is that he again doesn't mention given that this looks like an experienced professional doesn't talk about any promotions any awards or recognitions the fifth point is again we'll, we can give a benefit of doubt maybe the person has only worked in you know one role which doesn't which seems a little unlikely given that he has worked with multiple clients and things like that but we can again give a benefit of doubt maybe he's not really changed from one job to another and therefore didn't feel the need to include any reasons for transitioning okay and finally he does talk about his personal interests but does he mention why they are important not exactly the second part of this six element again is not included so let's look at the analysis of this response first of all yes this response is super cryptic it's almost like you know he starts the sentence and he ends it abruptly it doesn't leave me with any memorable information even the point where he talks about an epiphany that he's had where he feels that his true calling lies in finance he doesn't really talk about why does he have this epiphany to begin with he doesn't talk about again no memorable achievements are mentioned and there is nothing about his professional experience that would make me sit up and say wow this guy has really done something that warrants my attention and finally his personal interest is just a list he just lists a series of interests i like reading history i have interest in current affairs i like listening to classical music very generic set of interests without necessarily linking how those interests have helped him helped him gain maybe a skill or an important experience so what's the overall verdict of this response i think it's fairly clear it's an average response so we'll move on to the next example so example 3 again we know the routine so pause the video and resume it once you have gone through the example all right let's take a look at the structure of this example this is an example of a fresher who is still in his final year of engineering so doesn't have any professional experience so he starts with his academic credentials then talks about where his real interests lie in this case he likes to see how companies are using technologies to solve business problems and then he talks about the fact that he likes to read 
two major business publications, the FT and HBR. He also goes on to talk about two extra curricular activities in college that he's involved in. One is the fact that he's an active participant in college events. And the second is that he's also part of the management committee of his college annual festival. And finally, he talks about personal interests, which is solving jigsaw puzzles and brain teasers because he loves to challenge himself. Now, let's map these elements to the six element structure that we have. So yes, he starts off by providing a high level overview of his academic journey, which is great. The second thing he does is he does talk about an area that he enjoys doing. Now, he, while he doesn't talk about specifically the fact that he's passionate about his area of specialization, which is electronics and telecommunications, but he does talk about something that he really likes to do, which is good, which, which we can we can say that it does tick that, that box. The third, of course, is he doesn't talk about, in his case, of course, instead of professional, it can be academic experiences, but he doesn't really talk about any key experiences that he's had as part of his academic journey, nor does he talk about any achievements there. Likewise, he doesn't talk about any awards or recognitions. Uh, the fifth element clearly does not apply in this case. And finally, the sixth element, he does talk about his personal interests and yes, to some extent, he also talks why they're important because he loves to challenge himself, which is okay. Now, if you were to do an analysis of his response, the first, the first thing that strikes you is that he's in his final year of engineering. He's specializing in a hardcore technical field, that of electronics and telecommunications. But he makes a very broad statement. He talks about the fact that he's interested in seeing how companies are using technology to solve business problems. Now, he could have made it more specific given his background, right? And given the fact that he's still in his engineering, he could have talked about the fact that he likes to look at specific business problems through the lens of specific technologies, for instance, right? There's a clear lack of depth there. The second thing is, he talks about the fact that he enjoys reading ET, FT, sorry, not the, not ET, FT and HBR. But how has this reading all this helped the candidate in terms of acquiring new skills or knowledge or even experience for that matter? Because it's very easy for anyone to claim, I enjoy reading HBR or the economist and things like that. But if you don't, again, it's, it's, a, it's, that, that, it's a huge element of tell rather than show because you are not able to substantiate it with any concrete accomplishment. It's very easy for someone to say, I like reading this, I like reading that. But how is it translating into a clear achievement? That part is missing. Achievement in terms of maybe achieving skills, achieving knowledge or experience. Now, finally, if you were to look at his extracurricular activities, he does attempt to showcase that there is leadership potential by talking about the fact that he's part of his management committee or the fact that he's an active participant in college events. Again, just like we saw in example two where the person said, I'm part, I was part of a major project, a ba major banking project, but what was the role of that individual in that banking project? Did he contribute to the success of the project? And if they, and if he did, how did he do so? Likewise, that uh, that information was missing in the previous example. In this example, it's a similar case because this person is talking about all these places that he's actively participating. But what does active participant mean? So that part isn't very clear from his response. And finally, as yes, he does talk about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, again, the fact that he loves to challenge himself through jigsaw puzzles and brain teasers, not too much to delve there, but if he wanted, he could have also elaborated on what kind of skills does you know, solving jigsaw puzzles and brain teasers give him. But that's that's a there's a lesser of the sins. Clearly, the, the areas where he could have elaborated is the previous section where you know he can talk about, given the fact he's still in college, about how his various extracurricular activities are building his leadership potential and things like that. The overall verdict, of course, this is an average response. So we are looking at example four now. So again, you can pause the video and resume once you have gone through the example. All right, so let's take a look at the structure of example four. So this is an example of an individual who has just three years of experience, works in the banking space. He's a commerce undergraduate. Uh, he's part of a team of nine, works in a specific area with, with a large MNC. He's also been awarded an award, uh, awarded the most valuable employee. So he's been clearly the recipient of a major recognition. 
and he's also cited the reason why he has been uh, recognized and then finally he talks about his personal interest the fact that he's an avid reader avid music lover and that he's a lead guitarist in a local band so just all cool now let's look at the analysis in terms of mapping it to the six element structure that we have so yes he does provide a high level overview of both his academic and professional journey he doesn't really talk about why he's passionate about his work so it looks like he graduated in commerce and he got a job in banking but was that a conscious decision or was that the only option available we don't know he doesn't really talk about it much basically the reason behind his career choice the third element is there yes he does talk about the fact that uh, you know his experience is working in the credit card department is part of our team that handles all credit card clients so he does talk about his professional experience and he also talks about some a proven success in this case and the third element and the fourth element in that uh, sense are connected where he talks about the award that he has received which is that of the most valuable employee of his bank branch which is which is really cool and the fifth element looks like it's not applicable here maybe this is the only job this is his very first job and it's continue to be there and the fifth element yes is also interesting he cites his personal interests and why they are important now if you were to look at the analysis it's a it's a succinct response but again there is no attempt at explaining the rational behind his decision to take up a certain career right that's the first part the second part is the candidate does cite one important achievement that of being awarded the most valuable employee of his bank branch but one of the things is he could have also given some additional data uh, you know information to talk about to to highlight the, the the importance or the significance of his achievement which is for instance the award is generally given to maybe 1% of employees so the fact that he was the youngest employee to have received this award or maybe someone with less than 5 years or 3 years to have won this award something to that effect right that would have again lent more credence to his accomplishment the personal interest area looks promising but again see think about it this is simply the, the only reason why there will be this amount of scrutiny is because this is the context is that of a b school interview which is a highly competitive environment so this is an opportunity where he could have talked about something again which makes it extremely personal so imagine if you had 10 applicants that you were interviewing uh, you know imagine from a from an interviewer's perspective and if all of them are similarly accomplished and let's say one person really takes out the time to explain the rational behind and this is a great personal interest because a person is really clearly doing something right there is a lead guitarist in a local band he could have just elaborated on few more things maybe about some key skills or experience the fact that he's played maybe in some you know major music festival things like that where he was maybe the, uh, the Uh, uh, you know he was awarded something or maybe he was the uh, uh, you know major crowd puller and some something like that some additional information or maybe in terms of some skills maybe he's very comfortable dealing with uh, you know in uh, playing in front of a large crowd so that's a huge skill that is acquired because of his personal interest so something that that just just would have taken his response to the next level so on the surface yes this is a good response so this no doubt about it but if you skim the surface you really scratch the surface and you'd find nothing memorable about the response it's a very safe response so to speak right he doesn't really talk about you, you know that he has intentionally designed his career he has it looks like he's a dedicated person he's someone who does his work with lot of diligence and he's been uh, recognized for his effort at the same time he could have taken it to the next level by giving his own uh take on the way his career has shaped and the way his personal interests have shaped him so the overall response the overall world it sorry would be again an average response hello and welcome back to part 2 of plan your response now in this lesson we are going to look at the remaining three examples and at the end of this lesson we are going to leave you with or rather we are going to retrieve an important point that you need to remember so this is example 5 now this is a slightly longish response so take your time and we'll go through it line by line all right so first of all the person starts by talking about the fact that he's a tech entrepreneur and he likes or rather he loves both 
computers and he's also an avid rock climber then he talks about his undergraduate degree which is in computer science the fact that he also led computer science conferences while he was still in college is a great testament to his leadership potential he also goes on to substantiate it by saying what skills did he acquire as a result of that experience which is that it made him a much more confident communicator in the next sentence he talks about the fact that he wanted to gain some hands on experience and he wanted to specifically do so by working with a large tech company so that and again he's further substantiated by saying that so that i could learn from the very best and then he talks about his experience working as a software engineer at google and a specific area that he focused while he was there in google then he goes on to talk about what did he learn while he was at google which is that he learned to work in a team efficiently and he also learned how good working relationships add synergy to the output great then he talks about the fact that once he graduated probably his internship or his work with google also came to an end or maybe it was consciously that he decided to end it he launched an augmented reality app which was providing climbers with a route when directing camera at a mountain so he really talks a little more about he gives a brief about the app that he has developed and then he talks about the prototype that he built he established a team and he won a pitch competition and he finally won a spot at a tech accelerator now what does he want to do next is explain in the the, the second last sentence where he talks about the fact that he wants to take his technical knowledge his entrepreneurial drive and passion for sports and supplement it with a business knowledge a sports analytics tool set and a network so he's very clearly explaining why he wants to do an mba and he pretty much says that explicitly in the final sentence which is where he says an mba here is the best best path to do so so that's the overall structure of example 5 it's a, it's a longish response so you can you can actually uh, you know compare the structure uh, side by side here which is what we've done just now yeah you can you can take a look at it later as well now let's look at the analysis in terms of mapping it to the six element structure it looks like all the six elements are included in this response which is great and now let's look at the analysis first of all it starts the response with a hook it's it's going to be super easy for me to remember an individual like this who i can just simply connect and say oh yeah that's a guy who loves computers and is an avid rock climber so that's clearly something that stands out right he opens it with this hook so it's 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 got me hooked there for sure the second thing that he does is he talks about yeah the fact that he's created a memorable introduction it's also intriguing because it's not every day that you come across people who are uh, into computers and who also love to uh, do rock climbing now it's it's definitely an intriguing introduction so you said be very curious to know why this person has used to uh, to seemingly unrelated areas to introduce himself and then he goes on to elaborate and if you were to see every single aspect be it his undergraduation degree that he has chosen the fact that he has chosen to do his undergrad in computer science is because of his passion for computers the fact that he was already showing leadership potential by setting up by organizing computer science conferences while he was still in college and the fact that he talks about the skills that is acquired from that experience goes on to show that he has clearly thought through every single decision is made both professional as well as academic which is really good the other thing he does is that he talks about highlighting what he has gained from his experiences and that's a uh, that's that's a trait he displays or demonstrates throughout his response every single time he talks about an accomplishment or an experience he talks about what have been his takeaways from that experience or achievement and then finally he concludes by talking about how he'd like to plug the gaps in his profile while leveraging his strengths so essentially he's literally telling the interview interviewers that this is the reason why I am here for a B school interview. This is the reason why I want to have a business. I want to get a business school education. So the overall verdict, yes, it's a it's an example of a good response, a great response. So let's take a look at example six. Now this is an example of a music producer turned programmer turned product manager. Wow, this is great. It starts off with 
outlining the three roles this individual has played during the course of his career. And then he goes on to talk about the fact that he's published his first EDM record when he was 19, which was played by the world's top DJs. And it gave him confidence. So what was the takeaway from him? So uh, takeaway for him, he believed in his ability to create music that, that was well received by experts like the DJs. The second part of his, the next uh, sentence is where he talks about the fact that when he became an EDM producer, it also simulated his interest in technology as he started programming his own virtual instruments. And that interest in tech led him to eventually start working as a developer for a company that was in the music space. And then he talks about specifically his experience, which is, and if you were to look at the, the wording, it talks specifically about his experience, that of designing and building an algorithm for detecting plays across platforms to track royalties, which is a big deal in the music industry. He then goes on to talk about a challenge that he faces, which is that because there were no product managers, he had to take up that role himself. And he decided to do the research and spoke with labels and artists to understand their needs when he was building that algorithm. So he pays an obstacle and what was the workaround that he came up with. And again, what did that experience teach him about? It, it taught him about customer obsession and the fact that he enjoyed what he learned a bit about himself, that he enjoyed diving deep into the data to make informed decisions. And the, 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 the third paragraph or the, rather the fourth paragraph is where he talks about the fact how he progressed from being uh, to become the company's very first product manager and then he started crafting the company's product strategy. He then goes on to talk about a specific experience and an achievement connected with that experience which is that once he became the product manager, the first product manager of the company, he gained full P&L responsibility and he was able to increase revenues. 20 percent year over year and how did you, how did you do so by focusing on the labels needs to uncover smaller artists dj plays in mid-sized revenues and finally he talks about his post mba aspirations which is that he wants to become a product manager at a big brand such as youtube music where he wants to focus on customer facing experiences so that's the overall structure of this response yeah, let's look at the analysis part. It looks like the six element structure, all the elements are included in this response. Now more detailed analysis is what we have just talked about, which is that this individual starts by summing up the three important roles he played, that of a music producer who then turned, who became a developer and then who finally became a product manager, which is cool. So there are, it will be very, again, it's, it's a, it's an introduction that captivates attention. It's not every day that you come across someone who's turned, who's a music producer, who's turned into a developer and then who became a product manager. But think about it, it's not unusual either. It's how you position your, your story so far. This person could have also gone, uh, you know, taken a very conventional path and just done a very chronological uh, description of his journey so far. But what he did was he chose the most important elements of his journey, of his professional journey, and then he used it to craft his opening sentence. And that's very powerful. It has a great effect on someone who is meeting this person for the very first time. So it's definitely an introduction that captivates the interviewer's attention. Then he goes on to follow it up by explaining how each role led to his next role. Again, connecting with some of the previous examples where we saw that there was no attempt at explaining the rationale, the why behind a professional choice, a career choice or an academic choice. But this individual does explain why he took up each role. And he does so by elaborating on his, so in, his, in this example, he does so by elaborating on his first role. He talks about an achievement and skills gain, where, you know, he talks about the fact that he created music that the top DJs of the world actually enjoyed playing. And it gave him greater confidence in his ability, right? Likewise, he talks about then how his interest in his second role to become a developer in that industry, in the music industry, was triggered because he had his, his initial experience that of being a music producer and because he was creating music on his own. 
Then he talks about his second role. He talks about the company he's worked with. Again, it's connected. There's a there's a theme as well. So it looks like a very consciously designed professional profile. He talks about the fact that he worked with a with a company that again was in the music industry. He talks about the experience that he's had and the how he overcame a certain challenge, which is when he was developing an app, he an algorithm. He realized there were no product managers, and he decided to become a product manager himself, although he didn't have the formal title of a for a product manager. right and then he discovers what are the areas that he was specifically passionate about in taking up the role informally that of a product manager and then finally he talks about how he formally took up the role of a product manager what were his experiences and also he most importantly remember he does talk about a specific achievement that of helping increase revenue 20 percent year over year and finally he concludes by talking about his aspirations that this is what i want to do i have been working for the small companies but i want to eventually work for a brand like youtube music now if you want to look at this the last two points are very important he doesn't explicitly mention his personal interest he doesn't talk about the fact that oh you know what i'm passionate about music but he does but it it becomes where it's very apparent for anyone who listens to this response that this individual is passionate about the space because he has built his career around it so this is a perfect example of lot of show and not so he's he's showing and telling rather than telling and showing because that the reverse the tell and show part doesn't really work show and tell really works because he is substantiating every single of his experience or accomplishment with evidence he's actually done it and finally even though he doesn't talk about his academic credentials the way he has positioned his professional accomplishments she goes on to show that that is what he wants to position as as the focus of his response so the overall verdict it's an example of a good again a great response so we are now looking at the final example of this lesson example 7 Now let's let's take a look at the structure of this example. I am a 7 plus year veteran of database administration managing million dollar databases for enterprise clients. So this individual talks about the space that he is in, talks about his academic uh, his professional experience so far in terms of years and he talks about the clients that he uh, services which is across two regions US and Asia. He then goes on to talk about the fact that he's passionate about using technology and why is it because using technology to improve client experiences helps him achieve greater efficiencies and cost savings for both his organization as well as his clients okay then he goes on to substantiate it with a recent experience that he's had plus an achievement so experience plus achievement so he, when he learns that his company was about to overhaul one of its database technology and they were planning to get an external firm for the project this person this individual took the initiative to reach out to the person who was in charge of managing the project the senior director and then told him that he could do this project he has based on his you know experience in the past of doing similar projects and he also shows up with a plan about to how to execute the project with intern with with internal staff and he manages to complete the project successfully within 6 months and it resulted in a savings of $150,000 as well as the fact that he was recognized and appreciated by the senior management so he talks about an experience and he talks about the actions he took and finally he concludes by talking about the results he achieved in the next few paragraphs he talks about his personal interests where he talks about the fact that look you know while i have this deep interest in technology it's not just limited to my professional sphere i am continuously learning about the later latest database technologies there again he doesn't just stop at saying well you know what i am focused on upskilling he talks about the fact that he also believes in paying it forward by sharing his knowledge and that's why he started a blog and then he talks about the fact that how his personal interest that of starting a blog that of being passionate about the latest technologies has led him to build a community within a short span of 2 years a 400 strong community of database enthusiasts which is a remarkable achievement if you were to ask me and then the very next sentence he talks about the fact that he's also someone who's heavily into reading and that he loves to read on a host of topics 
and the next sentence he talks about the fact how his personal interest is two areas of personal interest one is the reading and the second is the blogging how, how have these activities helped him become better what are the skills he has acquired as a result of pursuing these personal interests which is that he has become better at communicating and he also has become better at networking and then he talks about his academic qualifications or credentials he talks about the fact that he received his bsc in it from pune university and the fact that he was clear that he would pursue his masters only when the time is right and it looks like the time is right because he goes on to talk about the fact that he wants to complement or supplement his technical knowledge with an understanding of business and leadership and management and that's why he thinks an mba is the best route for him to do so Now, if you were to look at the structure, you can go through it later as well. You can pause and take a look at the structure, but pretty much covers what we have seen so far. If you were to look at the six element structure, it looks like all the elements from the six element structure is included in its response. And finally, the analysis. It looks like it ticks all the boxes. He talks about his experiences. He talks about skills. He talks about achievements, recognition that he's received, his interests, as well as his aspirations. And more importantly, this is so important. He explains the why behind every experience, and that makes his response super convincing and super compelling. It's not like he was. uh he he drifted along you know the choices happened to him but he it, it's a very conscious des- design of his professional journey so far and that is super compelling so what's the overall verdict it's an example of a good slash great response and that brings us to the end of all the examples the seven examples that we that we have included in in this lesson finally and we just want to leave this 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 very important point we want to reiterate this further which is why the why matters i know we have discussed this throughout this lesson but we just want to emphasize one more time so make yourself memorable through your experience and achievements by talking about the why so why did you take up a certain area of specialization so that's your academic uh, you know profile or talk about the why of choosing a certain career right that would make your response extremely powerful and then don't forget to talk about the skills that you have gained from your interest be it your professional and your personal space is again very important also substantiate with achievements preferably quantifiable that would further make your response super convincing that's all we have for this lesson i'll see you in the next lesson thank you Hello and welcome back to lesson 4 of the first module. Now common question that a lot of candidates have is what is the difference between tell me about yourself and walk me through your resume. So if you were to look at these two questions there is a slight difference. 99% of the responses would actually be similar but there is a slight difference between the two. So Let's take a look at what those differences are. Now, we tell me about yourself. You can always include personal details such as where you grew up, interesting information about your childhood or schooling for instance. I am an army kid. I grew up in all literally all parts of uh, of the country. I have studied in close to 7 schools. So that's an interesting aspect I can, which I can bring about. Similarly, you may have a, a, a similar aspect about your childhood or even your schooling, right? and that's something you can talk about or the fact that maybe we were born in a in an exotic country or something to that effect now with walk me through your resume the focus is strictly on the information that's included in your resume and that information typically would include your academics not your entire academics probably it starts with your maybe your 12th you know credentials and then goes on to your under graduation and if you have a post graduation so that's the extent of what gets covered in your uh, in as part of your academics in your resume and of course your professional experience and finally your personal interest that's the only difference really between these two questions so walk me through your resume 
the information that you provide if this question were posed to you would be strictly derived based on what you have mentioned in your resume which is your academics your professional experience and your personal interest but tell me about yourself it gives you a little more freedom to include more personal information such as information about your childhood or schooling that's all we have for this lesson i'll see you in the next lesson thank you hello and welcome back to lesson 5 of the first module now in this lesson we are going to look at the do's and don'ts when you are responding to this question tell me about yourself now the do's what you should do when you are responding to this question include provide supporting examples this is something that we have seen even in the previous lesson where we had gone through seven examples so do provide supporting examples to highlight skills attributes and achievements don't just chop at saying well i like applying my analytical skills to develop something but go on to show what exactly did you develop and why does it matter what you developed likewise quantify details and outcomes you remember example 5 where the person uh, the, the example was that of an individual who was an idiom pro music producer who turned uh, into a developer and finally became a product manager he does go on to quantify his details and outcomes similarly with the other cases as well the, that of the database administrator or even the the individual who was passionate about both computers and rock climbing in every example in every instance the individuals chose to quantify the details and the outcomes of what they had achieved and finally emphasize your unique personality and this is very important the problem with the first four examples was primarily the fact that they didn't really talk about how unique what sets them apart from the rest of the crowd they really wanted to take a, a safer route which was giving some high level information about what they have done without delving into the reasons of you know what makes them unique so don't be afraid of emphasizing your unique personality everyone has great exam most people who apply to b schools they do have great examples is just the way you craft your story it eventually boils down to your storytelling abilities and your storytelling abilities hinges a lot on what aspects of your profile would make for a compelling listen and you and how do you do that you have to identify the elements craft a nice intriguing opening line and get them hooked by as we said again you know providing supporting examples and by quantifying details and outcomes people love numbers it catches their attention of course the story also has to be super compelling what are some of the don'ts that you should remember when you are responding to this question the first is you don't have to divulge any personal information such as your age your marital status political affiliations and so on you don't have to go on a on a on a trip on a rambling trip where you just list keep listing one experience one set of you know sets of experiences achievements and strengths one after the other you don't have to do that it will turn people off and finally it shouldn't be summarizing your resume word for word this is something that we have been emphasizing we've been seeing we've been talking about it from the very first lesson so that's all you have when it comes to do's and don'ts something for you to remember as you prepare and practice your response so i'll see you in the next lesson thank you hello and welcome back to lesson 5 of the first module now in this lesson we are going to look at the do's and don'ts when you are responding to this question tell me about yourself now the do's what you should do when you are responding to this question include provide supporting examples this is something that we have seen even in the previous lesson where we had gone through seven examples so do provide supporting examples to highlight skills attributes and achievements don't just chop at saying well i like applying my analytical skills to develop something but go on to show what exactly did you develop and why does it matter what you developed likewise quantify details and outcomes you remember example 5 where the person uh, the, the example was that of an individual who was an idiom 
music producer who turned uh, into a developer and finally became a product manager. He does go on to quantify his details and outcomes. Similarly with the other cases as well, the, that of the database administrator or even the, the individual who was passionate about both computers and rock climbing. In every example, in every instance, the individuals chose to quantify the details and the outcomes of what they had achieved. And finally, emphasize your unique personality. And this is very important. The problem with the first four examples was primarily the fact that they didn't really talk about how unique, what sets them apart from the rest of the crowd. They really wanted to take a, a safer route, which was giving some high level information about what they've done without delving into the reasons of you know what makes them unique. So don't be afraid of emphasizing your unique personality. Everyone has great exam. Most people who apply to B schools, they do have great examples. It's just the way you craft your story. It eventually boils down to your storytelling abilities. And your storytelling abilities hinges a lot on what aspects of your profile would make for a compelling listen. And you and how do you do that? You have to identify the elements, craft a nice, intriguing opening line, and get them hooked by, as we said again, you know, providing supporting examples and by quantifying details and outcomes. People love numbers; it catches their attention. Of course, the story also has to be super compelling. What are some of the don'ts that you should remember when you are responding to this question? The first is. You don't have to divulge any personal information such as your age, your marital status, political affiliations and so on. You don't have to go on a, on, a, on a trip, on a rambling trip where you just list, keep listing one experience, one set of, you know, sets of experiences, achievements and strengths one after the other. You don't have to do that. It will turn people off. And finally, it shouldn't be summarizing your resume word for word this is something that we have been emphasizing we've been seeing we've been talking about it from the very first lesson so that's all you have when it comes to do's and don'ts something for you to remember as you prepare and practice your response so i'll see you in the next lesson thank you hello and welcome back to the final lesson of this module in this lesson we are going to simply recap what we've covered so far. So to summarize, follow the three P's framework. You remember that plan, prepare and practice to create your response. The second part that you need to remember is use the six element structure to start crafting your response. The third part is analyze the structure of your response, which we've seen in lesson three in great detail. So analyze the structure of your response, map it to these six elements. Again, use your judgment. You don't have to include all the six elements. You can use your discretion to include the elements that absolutely have to be part of your response that actually strengthen your response and keep refining your response till it you're comfortable. So never fall in love with the first draft of your response. Keep working, keep refining it, and you will eventually get a draft that you are super in love with yeah the fourth point is prepare by internalizing so remember the bulleted versus scripted approach so do remember the main points of your response once you have finalized the response internalize by identifying the main points and remembering those main points the fifth point is do practice well make sure your response is under three minutes now if you were to look at all the seven examples that we covered in lesson three not one of them exceeds three minutes even with all the pauses strategically use pauses just go on, go on give it a try and you'll find that what i just said is true the second last point of course is use your pauses strategically remember to take to, to, to take a, a break when you to, again to give your audience the time to to absorb what you've said so do use your pauses strategically you don't have to make a, go on a, a rambling a trip again Finally, remember to breathe. So when you pause, it also gives you some time to catch your breath. That's all we have. And this brings us to the end of module one. Congratulations, you've completed the first module. I know this is this is quite a lot of information, but it's also been a fun thing, hopefully, for you. It was surely a lot of fun for me. So what we're going to do is we are going to, once you're done with this module, we are going to look at the second 
module which is again yet another very interesting and very important and difficult question now before we move on to the second module i would also suggest that you download the workbook that is there that comes for the with the first module do download it take a look at it and it's a fillable document it's a fillable pdf document you can actually fill up your responses and you can make multiple copies to keep iterating your response so by all means go ahead download the workbook if you want go back to lesson 3 or all the lessons that we've covered so far and make sure that you come up with a response that is super compelling and super convincing so i'll see you in the next module thank you so much